Hey guys, I thought I'd go ahead and do a little video. Jacob uh, said uh, I should probably go over uh, what I was designing, um, my thoughts that went into the Samurai, uh, and what I designed for. Um, initially, uh, this is what version 2 looks like. Uh, it had two slots and then the cavity for the mop. Um, from the start, I wanted the strap to be adjustable because a lot of the buckets see that they hang too low, they hang too high. Depending on what kind of tools you use, how you're built, how you want to run your configuration. So from the very beginning, I wanted the strap to be adjustable in height. Um, <clears throat> this version here can't be made. Uh, there's just no injection molder in the company in the world that can make something like this. It was 3D printed and basically kind of a dead end. This is what the final version looks like. Uh, this is a white one uh, without colorant, so it's it's not going to be available. It's just it was just a sample run that they ran. Um, I don't know how many people would want a white bucket anyway. As you know, the divider comes out and I've got two different dividers. Well, part, part of the reason for the dividers was since this one couldn't be made, this can be made. It requires two different molds, one for the bucket, one for the partitions. And I've got two different partitions, uh, one with a double V and one with just a, with a, a single, a single uh, uh, arm. And basically what this allows is different configurations. With the standard one in there, you got two slots for two squeegees and your mop. And this middle area here is just something that I put in because uh, it was, um, it just made sense design wise. And as I started looking at it, what I thought I would use it for would be for trash. Doing construction cleans, you know, you're scraping all those stickers out, stuff them in there, keep going. You know, because trying to clean out your towel bag with stickers and stuff, it can be kind of, kind of a hassle. If you're on route work, you're, you're scraping off that tape. And yes, a one inch scraper will fit in here. So for all you route work guys, you can get your one inch scraper in here, stuff the tape in there. And when you're done, you know, you can pull your partition out, clean it out, toss the tape, and it's all in one handy place. Uh, you can also stuff a smaller squeegee in there if you've got cut ups or if you've got a smaller window and you need like a, like a 10 inch. Uh, the, this is about four inches here. So, you know, it'll hold up to a certain amount of, of extra squeegee now this one uh, was a last minute change and since the accelerators have been so popular uh, the wagtails have been so popular and I use them on route you know so I'll have I'll have one stop where I need a wagtail to get the eyelid windows over this commercial job you know but the rest of the time I'm using my standard squeegee so not having a place for that for that uh, wagtail or the accelerator it's just like hey Let's just cut off half of the half of the wall, and then we can put a, a wagtail in there. Uh, we can put an accelerator in there. And right now, it's kind of set up for on your right hand, um, the the pad tool is going to go in the back. Um, I do have um, plans on making this ambidextrous, but that's going to be down the road. You know, a single partition that'll do both functions, but it requires a larger mold. It requires a lot more investment and. You know, I just wanted to get this thing to the market. You know, it's been over a year in development, over f four years thinking about it. So I just wanted to get it out there. So this was just a brute force way just to get it out there. And and the idea behind the partitions is that you're not going to be swapping them out in every day, every hour. It's just you've got that one job that you require a pad tool on, or you know you, you have a preferred setup for your outwork, and you're going to have one partition in there all the time. You know, so the guys who like the like the accelerator on all their route work, they're gonna use one partition. Uh, those who like to use two standard squeegees are gonna use the other partition. And then maybe once a month, you might have to swap them out just for a special job, and then you go back to your standard configuration. That was kind of the idea, or, or how I imagined I would be using it. Um, now the partitions, one of the things that I was really big into, uh, these partitions go to within an inch of the bottom. And I tried smaller partitions, half partitions, but when you're using something like the Ninja, it gets caught on the mop and it's gonna have friction. So I had to actually extend it all the way down. You know, I couldn't just go halfway, it has to go all the way down. But it goes to within an inch of the bottom. That's for two reasons. One, uh, the Ninjas won't get caught on the bottom of this partition. Two, it allows the water to come off your squeegee and drain into the mop area. Because the way this thing hangs, the water's gonna come off your squeegee and then go into the mop area where it's supposed to be or where it's gonna stay. So it helps your squeegees stay a little bit drier, especially if you're running heavy suds, like in a restaurant or something, you know, you use a lot of soap. It'll help cut down on the amount of soap that stays on your squeegee 
you know, when you're swapping out tools and stuff. So that was the idea behind that was, you know, the water's gonna come off your squeegee and into the mop area. And with the divider, you know, there's no friction between the, the squeegees and the mops, you know, when you're taking them in and out. Now, the one thing I knew that was gonna be, well, the biggest headache for me was the strap. How to design it in such a way that it's adjustable and uh, configurable. Because I'm about, all about hacking tools, right? You know, we, we, every single one of us, we get a squeegee, we got a, we got a dog ear it, we got to cut it, whatever. You know, we all have this idea inside us that we want to hack tools. Um, now the partitions allow you to hack them. You know, you can, you can configure them to do weird stuff if you want to. Um, one of my thoughts was like, if I'm really having a problem with soap, I could line uh, this with like microfiber just to wipe off my squeegee as I'm coming out. And um, you know, it's all about hacking. Um, the strap was the same way. Basically, when you get it, it'll be strapped on like this. This is an adjustable buckle that allows you to let it ride higher or lower, depending on how you want to run it. Now, I've come up with about seven different ways to, to, to attach this to a belt. Uh, the first thing to be aware of is that this Velcro part, it was designed for a three inch belt, like the Unger Ergotex, they're, they're a big belt but they're popular, people like them. Uh, not everybody's running a two inch work belt. So this will fit, uh, should fit an Unger Ergotec er, because it'll, it has a three inch span. So you can really get, you know, a big belt in there without having to, you know, worry about it. Now, if you're running the standard two inch belt, what you're gonna wanna do is you've got this extra flap. Yeah, you can just fold it over and now you've got, you know, like a, a an extra length, but, what I intended for it to do is you just wrap it around and then Velcro it. And now it's now it's up high and tight. So you gain an inch by folding over that Velcro around your belt, you know, getting rid of the excess. So now, you know, now it's gonna ride high and tight. That's what I that's what I designed it for. Um, so there's that option. Because I've seen some people they just put it on their belt and it's just hanging in the standard configuration, then you know you, you lose an inch that way. I'd rather have it high and tight, so minimize the amount of, of length on there. Um, but I like the detachable clip. You know, there was only one brand that allowed you to take it on and off, but it hung so low, it was really annoying. So with this one, it's adjustable. You know, you can get this thing high and tight on a two inch belt, it'll fit on an Ergotec. Now on the bottom half, you know, yeah, I've, I've attached some length here so you can adjust it high or low. You know, if you're running big tools, maybe you want it just a little, a little uh, lower. If you're a tall guy, maybe you want a little lower. And if you're a short person, you might want it a little bit higher, whatever. Um, there's those options. But one of the other configurations is you can take off that end of the clip and then just feed this on itself and attach it directly to your belt that way. So now it's not removable, but you can make it as tight as you want it. So that way it's, it's up really tight it's in, in a, you know, it won't swing as much. Um, if you don't want to mess with it, if you don't want to bother with it, you've got this little anchor here, zip tie it to your belt. Zip tie it in the position you want it, the height you want it. You know, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can configure this to your belt. Um, I thought of at least seven, but you know, I'm, I'm curious what people will come up with you know, on how they want to attach it to their belt. I've given you options on how to do that. So, you know, I really want this thing, um, you know, to, to fit comfortably for your style. And everybody has different styles. You know, uh, I was watching Kevin the window cleaner, and man, his style's weird. You know, I would never have thought of putting all the handles the same way. That's, that's not how I roll. Um, so everybody's got different styles. You know, I hope this thing is configurable for, it, for all of the different styles. And, and I know that, you know, I, I've scratched my own itch with this design. And... I know that, you know, I might have missed something that somebody's doing something weird like Kevin, you know, that I might have, um, I might have missed a certain style or a certain function or a certain feature. And that, you know, that's cool. I, I want feedback saying, hey, we should do the partition like this because, you know, that'll accommodate two pad tools. They can be separated and I can run different sizes. I can run a, uh, an 18 inch accelerator and a 14 inch wagtail just to, just to bug trad man because he's all accelerator all the time. But, um, so you know we can design custom partitions if it meets a sufficient need uh, i can't just do a one-off obviously but if, if there's a sufficient uh request for one yeah we can design a new one 
you know, I've, I've thought of uh, different partitions that we could we could make. But the fact is, it's really expensive to make, so I, I need to make sure that it's going to fit a wide audience. And that's what I was trying to do here. Um, so yeah, you're going to get three different configurations, two partitions, and if you want to just roll it this way, you can run it empty. You know, just uh, no partitions, stuff all your tools in there, and you're good to go. Um, now, what else? Now, I'm sure you've seen uh, the various videos on how the squeegees, um, how they rest on their spine. So, you know, it, when you're walking and stuff, yeah, the squeegee is going to move a little bit. But the way the partitions are designed, you've got a solid wall here. So that, you know, even if this, the rubber rests on it, it shouldn't ever nick rubber. It shouldn't deform rubber. Uh, like if you got the Pulex hard and it's trying to, um, you know, it, it has a tendency to bend, you know, to shape to whatever it's, to whatever it's leaning on. So even if you're walking and this, the rubber hits, it shouldn't ever nick rubber. And, and if somehow um, you scratch up this partition enough where it might scratch rubber, pull the partition out, hit it with some sandpaper, maybe hit it with a cigarette lighter, smooth it down, you're good to go. Uh, yeah, um, the distributors will be uh, offering replacement partitions, but, um, you know, it, it's just one of those things, you know, you, you can hack this thing a lot to meet your needs, to meet your functions, to meet your style, and I'm just really excited to see how people want to use it. Um, you know, even, even when I first started designing these, like with the version, the very first version one, uh, this is version two, um, even I was surprised, you know, because I, I designed it primarily to address the wet leg issue. Because there's nothing like going on route, day in, day out, using a lot of soap, and then getting your pants all crusty from the dirt and the soap. And if you're really sloppy, you end up with a rash underneath there where, you know, the soap and the water and stuff just start rubbing on your, on your skin. And I've had pants, you know, when I was running really heavy routes, really dirty routes, they had a crust on there that no matter how many times I'd wash them, it, it wouldn't come off. So that, so the wet leg thing was my primary issue. And I know a lot of people, there's some people out there who don't have problems with wet leg, you know, that's cool. You know, you have a different style that works for you. Me, you know, I'm just, I'm just sloppy. You know, I want to go out there. I, I want a full mop on my commercial routes and stuff. And I just want to, you know, I, I carry a lot of water and I don't want to have to think about, you know, my technique as far as putting it in and putting it out. Yeah, like maybe I'm sloppy, but um, a lot of other people have problems with wet leg too. So when I started designing it, you know, putting the mop in, putting a full mop in, you know, the water would run down these channels and drip onto the ground. And... You know, it's like, holy cow, this works. You know, even, even though I design it that way, even even me when I'm using it, um, I'm still surprised. You know, it's 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 gratifying and it's exciting that it works like I designed it. But I've got I've got a, a shop full of designs that don't work, <laughs> and I've got experiments on screen washers that I can't really release just because uh, they'd be too expensive to make or they'd be too hard to to, to make or or whatever so you know I'm all about making it simple and hopefully meeting meeting your needs um, I've, I've taken this design uh, out you know on uh, commercial routes and everything and and I even I'm amazed at you know that that my leg stays dry and the water tends to run off the front if you're really sloppy putting the mop in now the one of the things that um, when we got the production samples the we went with like a, a, a smooth finish and all the other buckets have a texture to them and the reason i left it smooth was because on route you get a lot of dirt and it gets into that texture and you can never get it clean so i wanted to go ahead and leave it smooth so maybe you can wipe it down and stuff but if people don't like it I mean, we can add texture later on you know if we get a big enough response that they like the texture or you know or whatever but I wanted it smooth for the route guys. It's getting messy. Wipe it down. It's it's good to go. Um, it should be easy to clean. Get a bottle cleaner. Stick it in there. Get all that mud out because I've got buckets that have had, you know, ten years worth of mud in the bottom that I can't get out. It's just it's just crusted down in there. So, you know, we left it smooth without a texture. Uh, we went with polyethylene. It's it's a little bit. Uh, it has a little bit of give to it, but polyethylene is is a byproduct of polypropylene. And it's really chemically resistant because I didn't want to have to worry about somebody using ammonia or vinegar or Wonder Store or any of those 
it should be resistant to all of them. And that's the problem with designing a bucket is, uh, is it chemically resistant? You know, if, if somebody sticks ammonia in there, is it gonna eat through there? You know, cause ABS, you put ammonia in there, it's gonna turn into a pile of slag. Um, so we went with poly, uh, polyethylene, has a little bit of give to it, so you can toss it, you know, if it drops from a ladder or something, um, it should bounce, it shouldn't, it should never crack. Uh, even in the winter time, it should, it should res uh, uh, respond really well to freezing temperatures or hot temperatures. Uh, most of the window buckets, the, the water buckets, the big ones, most of those are made with polyethylene because they have a little bit of give to them, a little bit of flex, and that allows them, like if you forget it in the winter time and it freezes, you know, it allows you to break through it and dump it out. So that, that's the reason we went with polyethylene. It's a little more durable, um, and I think it'll work really well. So, you know, I'm, I'm really interested to see how people um, uh, want to use it, how they hack it, because I expect you to hack it. You know, I expect these guys, you know, to figure out how they want to run it and how it fits them. Um, you know, that, that's been my problem since the beginning is, you know, I started off with one bucket. Uh, the rivets rusted out, so I had to zip tie it to my, my belt. Started eating my rubber, you know, nicking the rubber and stuff. So I went to a, another type of bucket. I had to put dividers in there because my stuff was getting all tangled. Um, so, you know, this, this thing came from a lot of years of frustration with, with the current market. And I'm, I'm just really interested to see how people use it, if they like it. If you're happy with your current setup, cool. You know, this is for the people that aren't happy with their current setup. So, um, I hope that helps. I hope I've given you some information. Um, feel free to contact me on Facebook or email me. Um, yeah, I just hope it. I hope it works for you. Anyway, have a good guy. Have a good day, guys.